What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief. Today's video is going to be very quick. Why? Well, there wasn't that much price action that took place in the markets today other than, well, just a lot of chop, and it's still within a consolidation period. So we're going to go over some charts. I'm going to reiterate some thinking, but if you didn't watch yesterday's video, go watch yesterday's video for some more in-depth pictures while I'm looking at some more internals. We are going to be going over today uh, some 30-minute charts, some indicators, as well as some commodities. Let's get into today's episode. All right, welcome back. If it's your first time here, by the way, high five. Welcome to the channel. I do these videos Monday through Friday, five days a week. We use technical analysis, intermarket analysis to get a good idea as to where the market might be headed next. We're looking at the market dashboard right now, and you can see here, well, relatively calm across the board. A couple things to call out here. Small caps down took the biggest hit. We've been kind of looking at small caps, and it was it just didn't look that healthy of a chart. Now we're starting to kind of see that momentum roll over a little bit. We'll see if it continues. Other than that, relatively flat across the board. Communication services took the lead um, in today, and we've been saying that those look like that looks like a sector out of the 11 sectors that can probably see the most significant run up. Um, we said that about a week ago, and it's been doing that mainly because of the big hits that we took within the communication service sector uh, based off of that Archegos blow up. And now we're starting to see it really kind of be in the top three now for multiple days in a row. Down at the bottom, we have materials. I want to bring up the relative rotation graph. Somebody mentioned in the comments. Why don't you ever bring that on? Um, I do on occasion. There's no real reason as to why I bring it on certain days versus not. I like to look at it from a weekly perspective to kind of get a good idea as to what might be leading or improving to find individual stocks within those categories or sectors to um, put a little bit more weight on in my trades. It helps see relative strength. That's what this is. You can see here, um, we're looking at a daily time frame. So only five trading days. So this changes fast. I just want to call out tech. Tech is improving and it's moving into the leading category. Meanwhile, all the leaders are kind of rolling out. Then we also have XLY down there too, which is leading. But XLK seems to be pretty important these last five trading days. And this could be because when you look at yields, they've kind of paused off. So on the run up, that's put a lot of pressure on tech. Now we're seeing a little bit of a breath. The 10 year right here was up you know, 0.6 or so. And then the 30 year was up 1.29% on the day. So Tech also today was one of the top leaders that could be part of, you know, this whole pause in yield. So if they start rolling over, maybe that's maybe that's really good for tech. We'll see. Um, let's incorporate the dollar into this. The dollar, what did we say? It comes down to here, 92 level. It can act as a level of support. And what did we see? Well, we don't see a confirmed bounce from here or a breakdown as of right now. And we're starting to see the momentum of the S&P 500 right here slow itself down into what? A period of consolidation and or a pullback. That's what we said. If it consolidates and then breaks up, that's a strong sign. If it breaks down, we still have the back test possibility around 4,000. That can be an excellent opportunity if it comes down there. All right. Now, when you look at the daily time frame, just look at the range of the candle. Once again, the range of the candle uh, can let me know how much drama, how much emotion is in the day of trading. So when you see these big green candles to the upside and or big red candles to the downside and it's followed by small range candles, that can signal that momentum is shifting and that can be to slow down or it can be to consolidate, okay? And that's what we saw here now two days in a row. This is actually some really good price action because we can create trade plans around either a breakout or a breakdown. But in order to do that, let's look at the 30 minute time frame. First thing I want to call out is this negative divergence that's currently building. Okay, it has not been confirmed yet, but it's something to worth noting. Also, from a bullish perspective, well, we broke out of this area and we've been going vertical. Now we're consolidating to be almost a perfect bull flag in all sorts. So, what can we do here? If we break out above 407, which in the aftermarket session, it is very likely to do so. Okay, we'll, we'll keep an eye on the futures market. But if we gap over this 407, then look for a potential sell into strength, but then you want to find out where that demand picks back up. So once resistance is broken, and then it potentially can become a level of support. So if 407 breaks the resistance, then becomes support, look for a back test, and then potentially a move higher to confirm a bull flag breakout. That could be an excellent opportunity to trade into some continuation of momentum. All right have a tight stop loss because it's very likely also that if you get a gap up, you can get 
you can get because of some of the indicators that we talked about yesterday were overbought, you could get a sell on strength, which could be mean you gap up and you roll back over. All right. So that's always a possibility as of then too. Now, if we start breaking down through this 40550 level right around here, just be mindful that it could continue to roll over to potentially fill these gaps. Now we do have bullish context overall. Okay, so if you are shorting the market, be very aggressive on profit taking. Why? Well, because when you have the context of the chart bullish, when we're looking at the 30 minute time frame, you have the 50 sloping up, the 200 sloping up, bullish context. If you break down, okay, it's not guaranteed that it's not just going to just bounce right back and cut and, and, and save itself from rolling more to the downside. Okay. Where can you find bounces at? Well, you can look at these gaps as areas of potential support. So if it broke down, you might come to fill the gap or come to the top of the gap. Then you might bounce, bounce, maybe come down to fill this gap, bounce. So just be mindful of that. I would say uh, put you can probably put more weight down in this level, 397 to 398, because you have prior resistance, uh, confirmed resistance quite well. Then it broke out, back tested, and then headed higher. So confirm support in this area right there. Uh, one thing I want to call out is the NIAD. This is looking at internal strength. Here you can see from this day we've been calling this out. Uh, you know, it's just putting in lower highs. And here it's been putting in the higher highs. Now it's relatively... It could work itself out, so this isn't the divergence anymore. Just note the area of support here on the one minute time frame is right around 4,065. You're putting in a high, a lower high, a lower high, and then right here, a lower high. So that's not the greatest sign, but in the aftermarket session, if resistant holds, what have we noticed in prior overnight sessions? Well, if the cash market can't break the resistance, guess what happens overnight? it breaks the resistance overnight and then we just have a gap up and we've been seeing that consistently now let's look at a 30 minute time frame of the dia also putting in lower highs just sloping down but it's in bullish context this could be a big bull flag here if we break out of 334.50 easy 336 as a target if we break far farther past that we have more upward uh, momentum to the upside too. So be mindful of that. But that 336 would be that area of resistance. We have this gap below us and this prior resistance. So this could act as a strong area of support to create some sort of trade around too. If we come down into this, you might be able to buy and then have a tight stop loss and then scalp a position. Or if you're in individual stocks that are within the industrials, well, just take note that, hey, when you come up into resistance and you're uh, on the DIA and you're in a stock, individual stock, as we're moving into an area of resistance here, you might see that your stock that you're individually trading might have some resistance as well. Uh, the last one I want to go over here is the Qs as far as the indices go. Just also, we broke out of this inverse head and shoulders, right? Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. I guess you can call it an inverse head and shoulders. And we said if we break through this, where would the target be? It'd be to fill the gaps above us. Today, we filled this gap. That's why I marked it in white, but we created another gap. All right, so we had that bull little flag, bull pennant right here, gapped way over it and then ramped up higher. And then we consolidated sideways today. All right, red line is resistance. That's 332. If we break above 332, we're coming to fill this gap right over here. Resistance right at about 336. If we do so, that will be a negative divergence on the 30 minute time frame. Be aware of that and be careful of that. Um, and then if we break down through this 330 level, just take a look at this prior gap to potentially get filled right around 326. So price action is very um, confused at the moment. Okay, so if you're feeling confused and feeling rushed to trade, don't because we don't have any momentum right now. All right, so just be mindful, be careful um, in that environment. Let's look at silver. Silver looked weak during the day. It was I, I, I knew it was going to look weak, right? We had this resistance. And we're like, oh gosh, it has to be confirmed. Then it looked really weak. But then guess what? The 200 period moving average all of a sudden got bought back up. Now this could look like a, a little hanging man type candle on a move to the upside. And then we quickly get rejected, right? I think if the dollar falls through this 92, I think that's going to be great for silver and great for gold. But as of right now, we're at an area of support, which means if that bounces, guess what happens here? Well, that's gold. Silver might also take a little bit of a toll too as well. But you never know. These correlations, they come and go. So we'll, we'll constantly monitor it. Gold here broke out of this little falling wedge and we kind of went just sideways today. We're down a dollar. So it's struggling to get continuation, low volume, not really convincing. But, you know, we're still making progress from this low and this recover bounce right there. So, uh, you know, let's just keep an eye on it. Nothing's confirmed yet. Nothing's looking astonishing here on the daily chart. Uh, oil also, look at just how confusing it is right now trying to find direction and price, okay? 
I'm really interested into the energy sector, but I need some sort of confirmation here on oil to see where this can go. A break above 62 can be very bullish, especially given the current context and trend looking at the moving averages. A break down, I think that we have potential move to 54. I would prefer that only because if we come down to 54, that might set up some very, very good opportunities within um, individual energy stocks too as well. Now, if we break through that, Let's look for the 200-day moving average to potentially get hit because that could be a definite possibility. Now, when I look at the price action, look at the two candles right here. Talk about indecision, right? A big move up, then we came down. And then this candle, we were a big red candle, and then all of a sudden got right back, bid right back up, right below the 50-period moving average. All right, so just a lot of confusion there. I wouldn't, I, because I don't see direction, I, I'd be hesitant to trade um individual energy stocks. Not all energy stocks are going to be this confused, but um, I think you get my point when I say that and why I look at oil. Then let's look at Bitcoin. Clearly, what's the resistance level? 60,000. It is a defined area with multiple tries and attempts to get above it. All right. So there's clearly supply overloading us here versus the demand. Now, if demand picks up, Guess what? We go bye bye 60,000 and we fly up to 62, 63, 64, 65. Depends on where a bigger demand or bigger um, launch of supply actually is. But right now, 60,000 is holding. The 50 period is holding. So just know that this could be potentially a high and then a lower high. Uh, we are getting a little strength right here at 56,000. We're putting in higher lows too as well. So this could be just a triangle pattern, right? So it's just coiling, building energy before either supply takes over or demand takes over. So we'll keep on to monitor it. Overall context is bullish. Just note the divergence here in the RSI and note the divergence here in the price percent oscillator, all right? That's all I got for you on today's daily stock market brief. Just to quickly recap my thoughts going into tomorrow, I'm looking at these specific flag patterns here on the 30-minute time frames to build good risk-first reward trades, either breakouts and back tests or potentially breakouts breakdowns. But as of right now, I'm taking significantly less amount of trades than usual only because the price right now is these small range candles and we're coming into a period of consolidation. So I want to know, hey, are we breaking down or are we breaking out? Let's get this show on the road. But as of right now, I'm currently waiting. That's all I got for you. See you later.